You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello, Ron. This is a case of Thompson v. Robinson and Fresneda. Thank you, sir. Good day, everyone. Good day. Mr. Thompson, you've dragged the defendant, Mr. Fresneda, to court to prove that you, not he, fathered Ms. Jasmine Robinson. You've never met Ms. Robinson, but say today you'll prove she's yours. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Fresneda, you were married to Ms. Robinson's mother and claim today's DNA test results will confirm that you are the biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, before we start the case, uh, Ron, can you please escort Ms. Robinson into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Please, thank you. I have you stand right here. Sexy looking. Mr. Thompson? Yes, Your Honor. Why did you finally decide to reach out to Ms. Robinson? Me and her mother had relations uh, while Ms. Fresneda was away. When Ms. Fresneda came back into the picture, I stopped seeing Sonia and uh, she uh, was pregnant. When the child was born, the family members came to me stating, you know, that she looks like me and things of that nature. And uh, Sonia said, no, you know, she knows who she got pregnant by. So, Ms. Robinson, have you ever, in your 29 years of life, heard that some other man could be your father besides Mr. Fresneda? Never, Your Honor. I would have never suspected that my dad, that I know as my dad, to not be my dad because he never treated me no different. So I would have never suspected. Now, he says he heard things from your family members. You've never heard those murmurings, no. whispers through the grapevine? Nobody never told me anything. They just left me in the dark. Nobody said nothing to me about it. Mr. Thompson? Yes, Your Honor. Explain to me, what made you so certain as to why you would just reach out now after all of these years? Well, She's 29 years old now. Well, I, I, it's sorry to say, but, you know, uh, I got a phone call saying that uh, she had passed away. And I was like... Are you speaking of Jasmine's mother? Ms. Yes, Robinson's mother? Yes, And it was her wishes to say that it was Ms. Mr. Fresnader's baby, they raised her, but I'm here today to prove that I am the father. In my heart, she's my daughter. So, Ms. Robinson, how did you find out Mr. Thompson was even looking for you? Um, okay, in June 2010, he had messaged me on Facebook, the first message, and was like, hey, tell your mom that I said hi. But I just brushed it off, I'm like, my mom has her own Facebook page. It's just somebody that she knows. So I just left it alone. I hadn't, didn't say anything about it. And then in, five years later, in 2015, he had reached out to me again. I have a copy of the Facebook message. I'd like to see that. Ron, can you please pass me the evidence? Yeah. Thank you. This is a Facebook message? Yeah, a Facebook message that he um, sent me saying, like, hi, do you know who I am? And I had said no. And then that's when he had started explaining the situation of how he's supposed to be my dad and not George. And it was a big secret. And, like, everybody knew, but nobody said anything about it. Sounds very good. I'm a friend of your mother's. Before you were born, ask your Auntie Felicia about it. Say that I'm your father and not Georgie. It was a big secret, but I thought she would have told you before she passed. I was a very good friend of your mother's. Me and your uncle... We're very close as well. You can ask him about it. Did you send this message to yes, I did. Ms. Robinson? Yes, I did. Over Facebook? Yes, I did. That's the only way I could get in touch with her. And so you get this message. And what are you thinking, Ms. Robinson? Like, I was like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like, that's all I could think. Like, this is crazy. Like, who was this guy telling me that he's my dad? I thought it was a joke at first, kind of. And so I had um, called my Aunt Felicia, and I said, Auntie Felicia, this um, guy named Ladner Thompson's messaging me on Facebook saying that he's my dad and not my dad. And then she was like, what's his name? And I had said, Ladner Thompson. And she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I'm like, oh, my God, what? <laughs> and then she started explaining to me, like, oh, yeah, he was with your mom while your dad was away. And um, when you was born, he was coming around saying that you was his child, but your mom was so adamant and kept denying it and kept saying no, 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 that the family just left it alone. And then she was like, but as you started getting older, I'm, you start to look like him. I feel like that I look like my mother and my grandmother. And so, at this point, do you say something to 
the man you think is your father, yes. Mr. Fresnado, you ask him? Yes. And I had told him, I said, Dad, there's this guy named Ladner Thompson that had reached out to me on Facebook and saying that he's my dad. And my dad was like, what's his name again? And then I said, Ladner Thompson. And then he had said kind of the same story that my Aunt Felicia told me. He said that years ago, he had came around saying that he was my dad, but my mom was saying no, and he loved my mom so much and just loved me so much that he just always said I was his daughter. So, Mr. Thompson, did you go searching for her? Well, you know, Providence, Rhode Island is a small town, so, you know, there was t times when, you know, I would see her with her mother walking down the street. I would say hi to Sonia and then look at the baby. I'm looking at the baby being adamant in my heart that she's mine, but at the same time, the mom said that it was Mr. Fernandez, so we, we left it alone. I feel like that's when it really should have came out. Like, you see me and you feel like if you feel in your heart so bad that I'm your daughter. Yes, I mean, I'm so sorry for that. But, you know, their relationship was happy. And at the time when she was conceived, I wasn't sure of myself, you know? So it took me a, a minute to, to, to get to where I'm at today. And the reason why I'm here today is because I can't live with it no more. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. All right, so Mr. Fresneda, you had heard of Mr. Thompson. Yes, we know You each knew other. who he was. Yes. You were fully aware. Of course. Okay, and so what was the story as you understood it? I asked her mother, and like he says, on more than one occasion, and she always said to me that Jasmine was my firstborn, and that was good enough for me, Your Honor. We went on and had four more children after that, and they all belonged to me, okay? Now, my point in here, Point I'm trying to make in here, Your Honor, that I wish that he, uh, he would have addressed me before he sent her a Facebook or whatever. I know he couldn't be able to find me because uh, we had no contact with each other. He lives in one town and I live in another. I, I handle these situations daily and I see many families. You are not the first family that's come into this courtroom that share a story like this, where there was a decision made at a certain time that she probably thought was best for her child. You all were in a relationship. You accepted the child. There yes. probably was a possibility the child could be yours as well. And so, you know what? We're gonna go with this. And we're gonna be a family. And we're gonna be all right. That's what we did. And that's what you did. Mm -hmm. And yet, yes. as part of this whole scenario, the truth is somewhere woven in that no one has fully grasped because there's also a part of this that's left out, that Mr. Thompson was there as well. And I feel hurt and I feel betrayed. Like, nobody told me nothing. And my family members that didn't know about it never stepped up about it, even after my mom passed away. I felt like, what would I have to be on my deathbed to find out, like, if he's not my dad? Like, that's not fair to me. You know, I, I have compassion for you because I've lost my mother as well. And I know what it feels like to be a young woman in the world without your mother. It's difficult. That one person in the world where you can ask any question, you know without a shadow of the doubt they're gonna back you up. You can't ask her these important questions. And that's hard. Now, earlier in the case, you mentioned your Aunt Felicia. Your Aunt Felicia is your mother's sister. Yes. You said you were trying to get answers from her. Yes. Now, she's here in court to testify. Ron, could you please go get her for me? And I want to try to help you get the answers you so desperately need and deserve. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. We are here, of course, discussing the paternity as it relates to Jasmine Robinson, which is your niece. Yes. Uh, you are her late mother's sister. Yes. Who did your late sister name as the father? Mr. Fernando. So, Mr. Fresneda. <laughs> Mr. Fresneda <laughs> yes. was always the father that her late mother Absolutely. named. Absolutely. This is her dad. Absolutely. This is what you knew. Absolutely. Did she ever mention to you that Mr. Thompson could potentially be Ms. Robinson's father? She always denied it. If we brought it to her attention, she always said that Ladin was not Jasmine's father. So why were she you bringing always... it to her attention? Because as Jasmine was growing up, I started... I, as the aunt, started seeing a little difference in the children. 
You did. I, it. I did. But um, because Sonia always was very, very at point, she'd get angry if you brought it up. And if you And so you remember when she dated Mr. Thompson? Oh, yes. So you remember right. that? Yes. And so therefore, when the children were born, because you said she had subsequent children, Mr. Fresneda already testified that they had more children after. Exactly. What you're saying, as all the children began to age, you felt like Ms. Robinson looked different from the other children. Yes, Your Honor. And so you attributed that to the fact that Mr. Thompson could potentially be her biological father. Yes, yeah, sure. And when you addressed your sister, she maintained that Mr. Fresneda was her child's biological father and a there was no question in her mind. Absolutely. And so you let it go. Yes. And so let me ask you this. When your niece reached out to you and said Mr. Thompson had contacted her, what did you think? When she called me... And she asked me, uh, Auntie, who's this man uh, got in contact with me on Facebook? His name is Ladner. I said, who? I was kind of tongue-tied because it, that everything that my sister always said just came right to my head. So I just said that I kind of thought that, you know, your mother always told me that your father was your father. But then as I look at all the rest of my nieces and I look at Ladna, I see Ladna. You do. When you look at I, your niece. I see Ladna. I look at his, I even been on Facebook and I looked at his other children and I can see a resemblance with the other children. She has five kids. I have 12 grandbabies. Who's to say her kids don't hook up with my grandbabies? And so you have a real concern because your family, the family you've made, you need, you want her to be able to understand whether or not her children are related exactly. to yours. And if she is my child, I want to build a relationship with her, you know, and her kids. And All this my is the kids. first time you've ever met in person, truly yes. met. First time I ever laid eyes on her. How do you feel as you look at her? I feel hurt. I also feel happy, you know. Uh, I respect uh, Georgie, you know, we, we know each other. We're not strangers, you know, but um, I think it just had to come out, you know, and uh, that's why we're here today. Yes, Ms. Robinson, what would you like? I honestly feel like if my mom didn't pass away that this wouldn't have came out. I honestly feel like if my mom was here today, I wouldn't even know of him. When I first talked to her, what I was trying to do is get to talk to her mom first before I relayed some news like that and laid it on her lap, because that's a lot to take in. You say you have other children. Have you told them about Ms. Robinson? Yes, they, they, they're friends on Facebook. She went to school with one of them and she worked with one And yeah, that's what's crazy is I know them. I know them from being around them. And one of the sisters, I worked with her. We worked together. And so you were working with this young woman without knowing that she potentially could be your sister. Yes. We worked together at the hospital for a long time. And I wouldn't know, even... Did know they know at the time? They didn't When they nothing. worked together, did your child know that she potentially could no, be... No, they, did, they didn't know nothing at the time. Once I reached out to her, I called all my children and told them that there's a possibility that they have a sister. They all accepted her as their sister. And Miss Robinson, I can see from your face, you still have doubts. Yeah, I don't know. I want to know. You walked in today convinced that Mr. Fresneda was your biological father because that's what you were told. And that's what you grew up yes. understanding. As you listen to the testimony today of Mr. Thompson, of your own aunt, your mother's sister, does this in any way change your perspective? Yeah, because I, now I don't know. I'm confused. Well, I can contest that we're all confused. You know, we don't know. And that's why we're here today, to find out the truth. To me, she's my child, and she's always going to be my child. Ron, the envelope, please. There you go, Ron. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. 
Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. In the case of Thompson v. Robinson, Fresneda, pertaining to whether Mr. Thompson or Mr. Fresneda is the father of 29-year-old Jasmine Robinson, it has been determined by this court the biological father is Mr. Thompson. You are her father. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. I'm sorry. Really? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, one of the guys here. You got this. Don't worry about it. That's my heart. That's my number one. I understand and I respect your decision and your petition and all that paper that you got in front of you, but to me, it doesn't mean nothing. And when I heard about it, I had told my dad, I said, even if you looked at me every day of your life and knew in the back of your head that I wasn't your daughter, I just wanted to say thank you for loving me. (gasps) I know this wasn't an easy day for you, Miss Robinson, but you have a man that adores you. I can see the look in his eyes when he says you his number one. (laughs) And I don't think that will change. No. You're very blessed. You have an aunt, your mother's sister that loves you, and you have your biological father. You now have the truth, and two incredible men, you're their sun and their moon. That's beautiful. I wish you all the very best of luck. Court is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, guys.